So how is a tank made in Giga factories around the world? The entire production process of tanks from the belt assembly to the cannon manufacture. Together we will look at the production of tanks in the United States today. The Abrams M1 tank and up to the time of the Second World War. There will also be a look at the factory in Russia and, for comparison, in Ukraine. The Joint Systems Manufacturing Center, also known as the Lima Army Tank Plant, is a tank plant located in Lima, Ohio. It is a government-owned contractor-operated facility currently operated by General Dynamics Land Systems. It is one of the most efficient, versatile manufacturing spaces in the world. For more than six decades, JSMC Lima has been at the forefront of military vehicle technology and as the world's militaries adapt to face new challenges, Lima's capabilities are expanding beyond anyone's expectations. Set on the flat expanses of Northwest Ohio, JSMC Lima's sheer size impresses even from afar. To walk through its doors is to enter a world of cutting-edge production. 1,250 skilled employees man hundreds of individual workstations. Overhead cranes lift and transport elaborate structures of up to 80 tons. Inexperienced technicians perform extraordinary operations using one-of-a-kind machines. The team at Lima produces many of the most advanced, highest quality vehicles ever built. Simply put, Lima's workforce can build, upgrade or refurbish any current or future combat or tactical vehicle, as well as a variety of other weapon systems. All of this is achieved in a 100% secure manufacturing space. It all starts with the most advanced raw materials. Over 250 tons of metal go in and out of the Lima facility of any given day. With that much material, it's no surprise that welding is integral to the center's operations. The staff of approximately 200 active welding professionals receives the highest level of certification training. The M1 Abrams is the third-generation American main battle tank designed by Chrysler Defense and named for General Creighton Abrams. Conceived for modern armored ground warfare and now one of the heaviest tanks in service at nearly 68 short tons, it introduced several innovative features including a multi-fuel turbine engine, sophisticated composite armor and uh, a computer fire control system separate ammunition storage in a blowout compartment and NBC protection for crew safety. Initial models of the M1 were armored with a licensed production 105mm Royal Ordnance L7 gun, while later variants feature a licensed 120mm gun. The M1 Abrams entered a service in 1980 and currently serves as the main battle tank of the United States Army and formerly the Marine Corps. The export version is used by the armies of Egypt, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Australia and Iraq. The Abrams was first used in combat in the Persian Gulf War and has seen combat in both the war in Afghanistan and Iraq war under US service, while Iraqi Abrams tanks have seen action in the war against Islamic State and have seen used by Saudi Arabia during the Yemeni civil war. In December 2016, a new funding program of $1.2 billion was allocated for the production of the Abrams tank 
and striker armed vehicle to be built at the Joint Systems Manufacturing Center in Lima. As of July 2018, the factory was producing 11 Abrams tanks a month. Most of the workers in tank factory were probably trained to build the cars. But when you get down to it, other than making a hole to fit the gun in, building a tank is a lot like building a car. A very heavy car with a rather odd sort of motion, but basically a car. It needs suspension, body, controls, linkages, a powertrain and transmission, a place to sit, etc. Back in the day, the most prolific automotive factories in the world were in the United States, many in Detroit. Thicker bodies and more wheels and more robust everything. Other than that, building a Second World War town is like building a 1940s car. Car factories of the 1940s were not automated like they are today. You essentially have a conveyor belt to move the body along trains for heavy pieces of body work and various stations along the way for manual labor. Most tank factories in Germany had a rail line running through or near them. This allowed for quick transportation of finished vehicles and it was easier to receive tanks needing repairs. However, as Allied air power dominated Germany's skies, it became harder and harder to transport troops and materials. Partisan sabotage also created further headaches for the Germans. Tank manufacture with high quality components is a very high tier industrial item. Only few countries are able to even produce such things and only five are able to design and produce every component themselves, which is German, Russia, France, Israel and United Kingdom. While other countries produce tanks most of them do not produce the guns. Most NATO tanks use the German 120mm gun, while most Eastern tanks use the 125mm Russian gun. Israel and France use derivate guns, but they are ultimately produced and designed in those countries. The United States also uses the German 120mm gun produced under license. The Chinese 125mm gun is also derived from the Soviet guns, but different in construction. They are also slightly longer than Russian guns are. 